know, I know. Okay. I'll say they asked. They know that we passed. Yeah. So. Damn. I'll say. Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got the new High Point JXP10 10mm handgun. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. This thing is the latest from High Point. And kind of going to start out, I am going to talk about what's good about it, what's bad about it. But I'm not making this video, and I didn't buy this to bash it, do terrible things to it. I actually like these things for what they claim to be, which is a reliable, inexpensive handgun that works, that doesn't need a lot of love and care from its owner. They generally meet that. They actually do what they claim to be. They don't claim to be perfection or battle-proven or any of those things. They claim to be inexpensive and reliable. And my experience with these and their carbines is... They are. They're not fancy, they're not beautiful, they're a little bit heavy, but they do work. So we'll be talking about this. There are a few warts on it. I will point them out, but you know, just basically the facts. But overall, I bought it because I do like high points for what they claim to be. So I'm going to start out that this high point is unloaded. The slide pull is very heavy, but it's a very big slide. So it's, there's lots of places to get hold of it. It has serrations at the rear and the front. So despite being in the heavy side, now this time it locked back because I pulled it all the way back. I've got a magazine in it. Pull the magazine out. I can release it. But despite being a little bit heavy, it is easy to actually easy to wrap because it's a full fist you can grab it with. Kind of an important, important point is there is no slide stop slide release. So to lock it back, you put a magazine in pull it all the way back. It does get a little vague at the back, so it's a little bit harder to determine if it's all the way back. I did have one problem with it at the range. The all the way back, the point that it locks, is so close to all the way back, you see there's very little extra travel. By the time you put a round in there, which of course I'd, it's unloaded at this point, it was hard to pull it far enough back with a round in it to release it. So I ended up finding that it was almost impossible to get it far enough back to get it to release. Of course, right now it's relocking because it's the mag's empty and I'm not going to put ammo in it for the video. So what I ended up really ended up having to do is when it was empty is release it, put the magazine in, cycle it, pulling it all the way back and letting it chamber around. A little bit of time it may break in and be able to do that. Probably one out of four times I was able to get it to go enough further back to release and allow it to chamber the round. A little bit of a hassle. Because of that, it was difficult to actually get it chambered if you were trying to do it the normal slingshot way. They do now include a Picatinny rail. This has some of the features of the YC9, the, the kind of that intermediate version of what's going to eventually be the next generation Yeet Cannon, which they've been talking about for a while but haven't released. But some of the things you see on this will probably show up on that, especially around the serrations. The finish is actually decent looking. It's, it's a powder coat finish, and it actually is kind of smooth and kind of continuous, and it's nice. The grips have a new texture. They feel kind of aggressive when you're playing with it at the, ta at the table like this. As I'm going across it, they actually feel aggressive. They feel like they're going to be kind of painful to use. At the range, they turned out not to really be that way. But I did have one issue with this one. You notice how this is kind of rounded. It wasn't. It was actually kind of square, like on this side. See how square that is? Now I'm right-handed, so when I grabbed this gun with my right hand, like I normally would, that edge, that sharp edge, bit into my hand right here. So I did, before I even took it to the range for the first time, because I knew shooting 10 millimeter, you know, there's going to usually some recoil, I had to round that off, because otherwise it was probably going to tear my hand up. I don't know if that's just unique to the way that the grips sit on this particular one, or if that's something that you'd have to deal with, but I would, uh, I would check it out. And uh, just kind of a note, you know, I mentioned that the slide is kind of easy because there's a lot to get a hold of. A hammer had a little bit of difficulty with the slide getting it to do what it, he needed it to do. So this is not a light rack gun by any stretch of the imagination. 
So the only thing that I felt I had to fix before I could actually use this was I had to round that off because I really didn't want to be uh, getting my hand all tore up. Once I did that, it didn't tear at me at all. It didn't, I didn't feel anything. So that little fix worked. From a recoil perspective, the recoil was actually quite manageable. It is direct blowback. For blowback to work with a fairly powerful round like 10 millimeter, the slide's got to be heavy. And the slide is heavy. The slide is 29 and a half ounces, just the slide. So with, with the slide removed. And that's almost as much as like a Colt Delta Elite or a Glock 40, the whole gun. It's probably about six ounces less than the entire gun. The total weight of the entire thing, as you see it here, with a magazine in it, is 49 ounces. And I actually weighed it. The interesting point about it is the manual comes with an insert in it that says 36 ounces. So I'm not sure exactly what they weighed that came up 36 ounces, but the this gun, as you see, it weighs 49 ounces. That's good and that's bad. I mean, it's bad from a carry perspective. It's a lot of mass moving around. It's good at, from a recoil perspective. The recoil on this was very soft. You'd almost feel it was like shooting a 9mm despite being 10mm. And the kind of the interesting thing I found about this one of the things I like about shooting a 1911 is that you feel the machine operate. This felt like that. I could feel the slide cycling because it's, there's so much reciprocating mass. I felt it, but not in a bad way. I felt it in a good way. It kind of reminded me of shooting a 1911. I will say that this was actually a pleasure to shoot at the range. The sights are good on it. There are three dot sight, yellow front and red rear. The rear is fully adjustable height and windage. There's a screw here you adjust for height and there's a screw there you adjust for windage and you can either use a regular screwdriver or you can use a tool that they provide with the gun you can also remove this sight and put in either a picatinny rail adapter or you can put in a flat plate adapter and you can put a red dot on these i don't know if there's going to be a lot of people putting red dots on these but they're actually capable of it and you buy, you would have to buy an adapter so they call it red dot ready but it's not ready as it comes out of the box. There is another part needed, but you can do it. I actually saw a picture from SHOT Show with a Crimson Trace red dot on them. So that is kind of a, an interesting nuance that you can actually put an optic on the high point. I did find it was mechanically seemed to be reasonably ac accurate. Uh, the trigger, and I'm going to talk about the trigger, but I had a little trouble with the trigger allowing me to stay on target. And it's got a 578 by 28, 0.578 by 28 threaded barrel, so that you can put barrel device, muzzle devices on it, suppressors, or whatever else you want. So they've added a lot of features to this. And keep in mind, we're talking about threaded barrel, optic ready, 10 millimeter, with an MSRP of 225. And I will say, the entire time that both Hammer and I were firing this, it worked flawlessly from round one to the last round, with the exception of that little bit of uh, issues with cycling it, you know, getting it to release. We did see one malfunction with it, but it wasn't in either of our hands. It was one of the range officers from the range that was shooting it, and I don't know if he did something wrong. He may not have seated the mag correctly, because as soon as it didn't work, he did the whole tap rack bang thing. He may not have seated the mag. He may have lip-wristed it. I'm not going to hold that malfunction against the gun, because I don't know the circumstances upon which it happened. But talking about that range officer uh the range we go to is a nice range and they see all sorts of cool things in there there's you know you'll have desert eagles you'll have fns walthers and all of those are kind of okay that's just another gun when they found out this was here everybody wanted to check it out everybody wanted to shoot it it draws interest and i even found that with the c9 that i did a review on a, quite a while back people are interested in these They've kind of got a reputation as being clunky and ugly, and then they are a little bit on the clunky side. But this one I wouldn't actually call ugly. This is actually kind of nice looking. But there's such a mystique about these, people want to try them. And what ends up happening when people shoot these is they actually like them. They work well. They're relatively easy to shoot well. They're easy to stay on target. Recoil's minimal, mostly because of the slide weight. And now with the ability for the Picatinny rail, the threaded barrel, and the optics ready, you can actually do some of the things with these that you might only have been able previously to do with things like Walthers and Glocks and Springfields. So they're actually kind of an interesting gun. Talk about the safeties, then I'm going to talk about the trigger. So it has obvious the thumb safety. You can see that right here. And that also locks the slide, disables the trigger. It has a 
kind of a sliding plate. It's a weighted sliding plate that is part of the drop safety. It's also got a hammer or sear block that drops in behind the sear to block the firing pin from being released if it's dropped. So one it works if it's dropped on its rear, one if, if it's dropped in the other position. And overall, I'm not a fan of those types of safeties, but I will tell you I have never heard of a high point drop firing. So they may not be the exact design that I would prefer from a safety perspective. They do work and it's got a magazine disconnect. That one, I, I, I don't like them and I don't care what gun it is, whether it's a Ruger or a high point, I take points off for magazine disconnects. I don't like them. But to fire this, you have to have a magazine in it. Now, in this case, because I'm dry firing, I put an empty mag in an empty gun and I'm gonna demonstrate the trigger. They have improved the trigger it's actually kind of a smooth trigger, kind of a light break, but it is a little bit on the inconsistent side. Now to cycle it, I have to pull the magazine out. When I did that, the trigger went a little further back and I have to let it out to put the magazine back in. So I can't show you the reset, but the reset's all the way out and then it breaks again. One thing I did find with the trigger, despite being relatively nice, feeling it here at the table, it was inconsistent. So I was, as I was pulling it back, the point at which it would break wasn't the same time point every time. So there is, I'm pulling the trigger, I'm waiting, it, expecting it to go now and it doesn't, or other times I was expecting it to go a little bit later and it went a little bit early. So the trigger is a little bit inconsistent, but it is better than the trigger on some of the older high points like the C9 that I've had for years, that this is a much better trigger than that, but you're definitely not looking at a Walther or a Glock trigger doesn't claim to be and it's not but it is an improvement so if you tried a high point before and absolutely hated it try the newer one you may find that the trigger is acceptable and I think if I practice with this particular trigger a little bit got used to its inconsistency I would find that it didn't interfere with me I was able to group a little bit better as I went along with it but surprisingly I was actually able to group quite well with this the mechanical accuracy of this thing is there and with the recoil management of the heavy slide, it's kind of easy to get back on target. So this is usually the point in a video I would actually disassemble a gun to show you the internals. Well, to disassemble these, you have to punch out pins. It's kind of a clunkier procedure. So I did that separately. I'm gonna cut in a section where I have it apart, show you the internals, and then I'll resume, pick up where we left off. I've got the high point apart, and I was gonna show you the internals. So you've got the guide rod, polymer guide rod spring. Of course, here's the barrel. You do have to remove the thread protector because even though if you look at the hole at the end of the slide it looks like it would fit it actually doesn't so you have to take the thread protector off that's not unusual most guns you have to take the thread protector off the internals of this are actually relatively simple so here's the sear back here you can see that the feed ramp is not particularly fancy it's not really machine polished even it does work i've got a nine millimeter that i've taken out and it's built basically the same way and it works as well. And the internal of the slides is also quite simple. So you have the firing pin assembly, the springs, and the retainer, and this will just slide out the back. There's a hole at the back that that locks into when you reassemble it. So it's simple, everything in here is simple. There's not a not fancy machining, but good enough. The machining is done well enough for the guns to be functional and reliable but there's really nothing particularly fancy about it. And that's what these are about. They're not fancy. They're not meant to be fancy. Last thing I'll show you is the barrel. This, by the way, is the roll pin that holds the thing together. It's conventional rifling, as you would probably expect. So it's not fancy, but it's well enough done. It's, it's clean. There's no machining marks. There's no chatter or anything else. It's actually nice solid rifling. So as you can see, the machining on it, it's not spectacular. There's some things in there that you would actually call bad if you were looking at a five, six, seven hundred dollar gun. But for what these are intended to be, it's good enough. It gets the job done and these do work. A couple other things that's interesting about these, they have a lifetime warranty and it's one of these no questions asked. If you break it, if you damage it, usually warranties don't cover stupid things you do. Their warranty does tend to cover those things. So pretty much anything that goes wrong with this thing through the lifetime of it, whether you're the original owner or you've bought it used, they're going to fix it. So you send it back, they fix it, and, and send it back to you, and you're back in business. A lot of gun manufacturers today kind of have lifetime support, 
but they reserve the right to blame you and then say it's out of warranty and you have to pay for it. And iPoint doesn't do that. And I almost think that they probably don't get very many warranty claims on them because they do tend to work. These aren't 100,000 round guns. If you've got the money to buy 100,000 rounds of ammunition to actually wear one of these things out, you're probably not buying one. For what these are for, self-defense, hunting, which I'm glad to see that a 10 millimeter is available at a reasonable price because hunting is kind of turned into a, kind of almost a rich man sport. And I like to see where not everybody has to be rich to be able to get into that. On their site, uh, there are holsters and things available. I believe this will fit holsters for the 45, but I can't confirm that. But there, I didn't see a specific one for the 10 millimeter, but I believe the JCP 45, it should fit a JCP 45 holster. I just can't confirm that yet. Last things before we wrap up, dimensions, it's eight and a half inches long, it's six and a half inches tall, and it is kind of a chunky thing. It's a little over 1.4 inches wide. Magazines are kind of interesting. So the magazine that came with it, and it comes with one magazine, is labeled 10 millimeter 40 Smith & Wesson. These are fully compatible with the magazines from the 1095 TS, their little carbine, which is actually, I've got one of those and I actually kind of like it. These hold 10 rounds. The magazines that come with the carbine are labeled 10 millimeter auto only. So it's just a labeling difference. But if you've got a 1095 carbine and you've got magazines for it, then you've got magazines for this and vice versa. Which going back to kind of my hunting reference, you would use 10 millimeter carbine possibly for hunting and this could be your sidearm and you've got magazine interchangeability. Something that you have with much higher cost things like the PS90 and the 5.7 pistol, you now have in a completely different price range with the high points. A couple other things I almost forgot. Uh, number one, I did mention earlier, there's no external slide stop slide release and there is not one on the other side. And there are no ambi features. So the magazine release is not reversible. The safety is only on the one side. So all the features are on this one side. And the front sight is uh, compatible with Glock sights. So you could replace the front sight with any Glock compatible sight. But the rear sight is their high point proprietary. So you would only be able to replace this with other high point sights. And it does come with a ghost ring sight in the box that you can put in if you choose. I didn't. I kept the sight that came with it. But that comes in the box. So kind of interesting. I Overall, kind of a, to sum up, is this a perfect pistol? No, doesn't claim to be. Is it a nice pistol? Is Are you getting your money's worth if you buy one of these? Absolutely. This thing worked. The C9 that I've had worked. The carbine that I've had worked. They make stuff that works. And when they talk about what they claim to be, they meet their claims. You really can't ask for much more from a, any pistol or carbine is to meet the advertised claims and work. These do. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Patreon, Instagram, Utreon, Getter, Rumble, pretty much everywhere. And thank you.